Hello everyone, welcome to the ninth lecture of problem series of limits. So today's question is, consider a point P1 on the curve y is equal to x cube, such that the tangent at P1,1 meets the curve again at P2, and again we are drawing a tangent at P2 and it is meeting the curve again at P3. And the sequence will go on. We'll draw a tangent at P3, it's going to meet the again on the curve P4 and so on. Now let's say x of n and y of n be the coordinates of P of n. Then we have to find the value of limit n is tending towards infinity summation of 1 upon x of r where r is varying from 1 to n divided by the same coordinates, same everything and the series will run for y of r here. So let's start. Now let me start with the function y is equal to x cube only and all of you are very much comfortable with the graph of y is equal to x cube I think. The graph of y is equal to x cube is something like this. And now let's select a point. They are saying p1 we are selecting a point on the function y is equal to x cube let's say the point is alpha comma if x is alpha then y coordinate will be alpha cube and don't take one more variable because it's going to add one more equation to your solution so always when you take the coordinate and function is given take only one variable so here i've taken alpha and alpha cube and they are saying from p1 we are drawing a tangent so let's say the tangent is something like this now the tangent is meeting the curve again at p2 now let's take p2 as beta comma beta cube. As you can see, I have not taken one more variable extra. As I've taken x coordinate beta, I have, similarly I've taken y coordinate as beta cube. Now they are saying from p2, again we're going to draw a tangent on the curve. So the tangent will be something like this. This is not accurate diagram. Okay. Let's say this is p3. And let's call p3 as gamma comma gamma cube. And from p3, again we are drawing a tangent. So it will be something like this on the curve again. Now here they're going to meet P4. Now we have to find the relation between X of R plus one and X of R. That means at P1 I'm drawing the tangent, let's call this as X of R and it's meeting the curve again at P2. So let's call this X coordinate as R plus one because the sequence will keep on varying. So if I find somehow find the relationship between the previous X coordinate and next X coordinate, maybe I'll get the answer because in question, the involvement of x of r and x of r plus 1 is there. The previous and the new coordinate. Similarly, I'm going to find relation between y of r plus 1 and y of r here. So that is the objective. So let's start with the relation between alpha and beta. How to find the relation between alpha and beta? So in application of derivative, we do this. We compare the slopes. And the step is very important. Comparing slopes. So how are we going to compare the slopes? First, I'm going to calculate the slope from coordinate geometry. And I'm going to equate the slope from calculus. So from slope from coordinate geometry between two points, P1 and P2 will be Y2 minus Y1 on X2 minus X1. That will be alpha cube minus beta cube whole divided by alpha minus beta. Similarly, slope from calculus, sorry, slope from calculus will be, if I calculate y dash, that will be 3x square. So y dash at P1, that means alpha comma alpha cube, I can calculate the derivative, that is the slope, dy by dx will be the slope, and that will be equal to 3 alpha square. Now here the one factor, alpha minus beta and alpha minus beta will cancel out. I'm going to open alpha cube minus beta cube, that is alpha square plus alpha beta plus beta square will be equal to 3 alpha square. Now, uh, let's take 3 alpha square on one side and I'm, I can write here beta square uh, plus alpha beta minus 2 alpha square is equal to 0. Now from here we can write the value of beta. The value of beta will be, now I think we can easily factorize this equation. So you can write beta square plus 2 alpha beta minus alpha beta minus 2 alpha square is equal to 0. So from here we will get the value of beta that is beta is equal to minus 2 times alpha. And here you will get one more value or you will get beta is equal to alpha here. Now, as you can see, beta cannot be equal to alpha because these two are clearly different points. So this is not included in the solution. This will be our answer. Beta is equal to minus 2 alpha. Now, if you observe one more thing, as I told you, this will be x of r plus 1. And this is the point where we have taken the tangent. And this is the point where the curve is meeting P2. So the relation between x of r and x of r plus 1 as in uh, we are getting beta is equal to minus 2 alpha. Similarly, if you draw the tangent at beta, we'll get uh, gamma is equal to minus 2 beta. 
similarly one more point delta we can write delta will be minus 2 alpha sorry uh, gamma here similarly the same goes for y coordinate let me generalize for the x coordinate so can I write x of r plus 1 will be equal to minus 2 times of x of r and from here we can write x of r upon x of r plus 1 is equal to minus half here similarly I'm, I can say that for y coordinate y of r plus 1 is equal to something y of r now since the function is y is equal to x cube so cubic will vary here because in x coordinate minus 2 is varying here so minus 2 cube is minus 8 here similarly I can, I can say here y of r upon y of r plus 1 will be equal to minus 1 by 8 so they are forming clearly forming a gp x coordinate is forming a gp with the common ratio minus half and y coordinate is forming a gp with the ratio minus 1 by 8 let's solve the question now in order to calculate the limit first i'm going to open the summation so we'll get here limit n is tending towards infinity we'll get 1 by x1 plus 1 by x2 plus 1 by x3 and so on till plus 1 upon x of n whole thing is divided by limit n is tending towards infinity 1 by y1 plus 1 by y2 plus 1 by y3 and so on till plus 1 upon y of n here now I'm going to use the previous relation which we got from the comparing slopes we got the relationship between the previous x coordinate and the new x coordinate that is x of r and x of r plus 1 now x1 corresponds to 1 upon alpha 1 or you can say alpha now 1 upon x2 will be 1 upon beta now 1 upon beta immediately you can write this as minus 1 by 2 alpha so I think if you write x3 in the terms of x2 and again in the terms of x1 you will get an infinite gp here you will get a gp with the common ratio you can say minus half and similarly denominator is also a gp geometric progression with the common ratio minus 1 by 8 now as you can see in both cases mod of r the common ratio is less than 1 that means here I can apply infinite gp formula so if I apply infinite gp formula in the numerator I will get this as 1 upon 1 minus minus of half here whole thing is divided by 1 upon 1 minus minus 1 by 8 so the value will be equal to 3 by 4 so final answer will be 3 by 4 and that will be all